All right. Welcome, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Uh, let's say, hey, y'all in Texas. Um, <laughs> so the name of this session is Jumpstart Your Production OpenStack Deployment with FlexPod. So, but first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is David Kane. I'm a reference architect and technical marketing engineer working at NetApp. Been there about a year and 11 months now. Uh, previously to that, I spent about 10 years in a data center environment, um, touching all things storage, networking, and compute for a very large IT department at a large IT company. I have a BS in computer science from NC State University. Uh, and if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, uh, my handle is up there. So for this presentation today, uh, just four agenda points that I want to take you guys through. The first is just some enterprise challenges that we hear uh, here at NetApp about OpenStack adaptation. Uh, a little bit about uh, NetApp, why NetApp specifically for uh, OpenStack and FlexPod for OpenStack. Uh, I got a little bit of an announcement that I want to take everybody through. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some infrastructure and integration proof points that we have. Um, one of the favorite things that I have that I do in my job is not only give presentations in front of customers like you, but also do real, real work in the lab, because uh, I don't like to get too far away from the technology. So doing is, uh, talking is good, but doing is better. So that's, we'll talk about that towards the end of the presentation. So a couple of key challenges that I hear um, as a TME, and when I talk to customers through either VIP meetings or even conversations that we have ourselves here, um, I hear that it's, it's a, operationally, it's an extremely complex to deploy piece of software. Um, it has a six-month release cadence. It's too hard for me to keep up with. Um, there's too many knobs. There's too many buttons to push. I don't even know how to get started. You know, I, I might have had a, 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 an experience deploying OpenStack, and it was quite challenging for me. Um, there's risks of, of implementing OpenStack for me in my organizations. Uh, how do I operate it? How do I support it? How do I scale the infrastructure? Because you know, the, the infrastructure has to be there to support the cloud. And how do I rapidly provision instances for the eventual consumption of my customers? Also from a design perspective, how do I have efficient and scalable cloud resource utilization? You know, how can I ensure that I have scalable infrastructure, I alluded to that earlier, that can support my uh, desires in the cloud? You know, do I have a, a compute platform that I can know and rely on? Do I have a storage platform that I can know and rely on? Can it scale with my initial deployment? Because the age old adage is, if you build it, they will come. You better be ready for when that happens. And high availability. The enterprises that I speak to, that's an extremely important tenant. How can I ensure full HA of all the components, the infrastructure and the OpenStack components? How can I do that? So why converged infrastructure? Uh, so converged infrastructure, for those folks that may not know, in the OpenStack community, appliances, that's you know, one of the terms, synonymous terms I've heard uh, applied towards converged infrastructure, but it's, it's basically a compute, storage, and networking resources that are bundled together in a pre-validated, uh, pre-tested platform. Um, this reduces risk. You know, going back to the design and operations type concerns from earlier, this is a proven platform. This is something that you know you can rely on. It reduces total cost of ownership. So whenever you buy these, roll it into your data center. Um, this, this is something that you can rely on. You can scale with it. You can, you can, it has independent scale points. Um, con contrast that with maybe a hyper-converged infrastructure where you can scale just to what you need. Scale the storage if you need it. Scale the compute if you need it. And it increases speed and ease of deployment. So a little bit about FlexPod. FlexPod is a converged infrastructure platform, uh, a joint venture between Cisco Systems and NetApp uh, that's recently celebrated uh, five years. In that time, we've had about $5.6 billion in revenue as a, as a result of that joint technical engineering effort. And we've produced about 100 validated designs across many different platforms, enterprise applications, uh, certainly OpenStack, uh, uh, VMware, Hyper-V, you know, various, various platforms. So it, it, it's, it's an ideal platform for virtualization and cloud infrastructures. And what does it comprise of? It's the Cisco Nexus family of switches. This is the 9Ks, the 5K variants. Um, from a storage standpoint, it's uh, both NetApp FAS and or E-series storage represented at the storage layer. And at the compute layer, it's the Cisco Unified Computing System B or C-series servers. So why run OpenStack on, on FlexPod? 
Well, really, uh, one thing I, that I've seen a lot at the summit here is both developers and operators. So purely from a developer, why do you care about infrastructure? Why is that important to you? Well, with OpenStack on FlexPod, you've got a private cloud infrastructure as a service much faster. You don't have to worry about setting up any of the infrastructure bits because those are taken care of for you. You know, when you write your applications and your workloads uh, to take advantage of either you know, traditional applications in OpenStack or these new cloud native uh, type applications, block file and object is ready to be utilized in the resulting deployment right away, out of the box. And you can concentrate on developing your applications. Specifically from an operator, this is a complete data center in a single rack. All of the components necessary for you to deploy OpenStack or any other reference workload on. All of the robustness of FlexPod, having you know, high availability components, everything being deployed in pairs, you know, from the networking layer, from the storage layer, and from the compute layer, everything comprised in the infrastructure is HA on day one, including the OpenStack components. So as I talk about the distribution components here in, an, in a couple subsequent slides, that as well is, is fully HA in the resulting architecture. And hybrid cloud, uh, you're ready on day one with FlexPod. As you have this in your environment, um, we have a vision at NetApp called the data fabric. And what this really means is you being able to take control of your data, being able to burst to public cloud, be able to burst to different environments, however you choose to do so through our snap mirror protocol. You can run a version of our operating system called Cloud on Top in Amazon or Azure or IBM software today. And so you can seamlessly connect to these clouds using FlexPod as a basis. Now, why NetApp and FlexPod for OpenStack? So at NetApp, we're a chartered gold member in the OpenStack Foundation. In fact, we sponsored, or initially the, there was a, one was a sponsor of the original Diablo Summit. If you look at the timeline down at the bottom here, uh, we have elected board representation uh, on the OpenStack Board of Directors. Um, if you look at the OpenStack user survey results consistently, uh, NetApp and SolidFire, our recent acquisition that we had in February of this year, we were the number one commercial storage offering for production deployments, purely by user survey results. We're a huge deployer of OpenStack internally as well. In fact, I just gave a presentation with my colleague, Mansi Pravakar, about just how we're taking our OpenStack deployment internally. The fact that uh, we have about a 70,000 VM capacity today in that internal cloud, and FlexPod serves as the basis of that own internal deployment that we have inside NetApp. Community and project leadership, we ship all of our drivers upstream, straight to the open source community, so they can be consumed in, with any distribution that you choose, or if you choose to roll your own. There's nothing to download, there's, you know, it's, it's all there upstream and open source. So comparing and contrasting those do-it-yourself type and, uh, deployments versus running OpenStack on FlexPod, um, I think this chart kind of illustrates so, some of the facets of that. So rolling your own, you don't really have a product, product roadmap specifically with upgrades taken care of in that. Um, with choosing a converged infrastructure like FlexPod and the integrated relationship uh, that we have, uh, NetApp, Cisco, and Red Hat, we consistently refresh our solutions to accommodate uh, the ever-changing ecosystem and six-month release cadence of OpenStack. So instead of having a six-month uh, life cycle of you know, the upstream release, uh, you can utilize a distribution like Red Hat OpenStack platform, which has a three-year life cycle. So download it, install it on a FlexPod today, and you've got that uh, ease of use and knowing that it will be supported if you need to reach to, out to Red Hat for three years. With OpenStack on FlexPod, you have a more accelerated production timeline. So these reference architectures and deploy, design and deployment guides that I mentioned, you can use these to quickly and effectively set up the infrastructure using best of breed uh, components as well as architectural guidance and advice. And it's an integrated infrastructure platform. So as I mentioned, storage, compute, and networking all bundled together, fully supported. Um, it's a validated design that lowers your risk so just to take you through some of the components um, that are represented, the tight integration between uh, FlexPod and uh, Red Hat OpenStack platform, um, from a Nova perspective, um, we can rapidly clone instances with FAST. This is a differentiated offering uh, when you consider deploying OpenStack internally, utilizing it with FlexPod. We have a lot of storage efficiency features there that really make cloning of instances very fast in the resulting cloud. And more on that and some of the proof points in a few minutes. From a glance perspective, 
your image repository contains a collection of, of operating system images that you want to deploy in those resulting instances. We can turn on our storage efficiency features with our NetApp FAS platform. I'm reminded of the presentation I just gave where internally at NetApp, uh, we have about 65 terabytes worth of storage being used for OpenStack. When we turn on that space efficiency, uh, we're only using five terabytes. So that's a 91.8% reduction in the physical space that's stored employed using that technology. From an object storage standpoint, I mentioned that as a developer benefit, uh, in our solution we have our NetApp E-Series platform represented and storing uh, the Swift uh, object storage, both the objects themselves and the associated metadata on our NetApp E-Series platform. And as the sizes of disks increase, six terabytes, eight terabytes, you know, traditionally Swift with DAS, it takes quite a long time to rebuild those disks. Well, the rocket scientists over in the NetApp E-Series engineering came up with a uh, basically a evolved uh, RAID algorithm called dynamic disk pools technology. And that actually speeds up the rebuild times by a factor of eight. So much faster uh, in rebuilding those failed drives for the Swift object store implementation. Manila. We have our shared file systems as a service project uh, featured and highlighted in Red Hat OpenStack platform. That's where you can spin up a file share uh, hosted on our NetApp FAS device uh, automatically for you. So for those that may have run departmental file shares in a previous life as an IT administrator, um, this provides the ability to do that in the resulting OpenStack cloud so your users don't have to write a ticket to you to say, I need a file share as a service. That project takes care of that, and that's integrated in Red Hat OpenStack platform. From a Neutron standpoint, we feature our Nexus 1000V virtual switch from Cisco, specifically running on KVM. And that's a common pain point I hear from customers. Neutron is complicated. I don't know how to administer it. I, st I still have a, a network team that needs to be able to have visibility and control in the resulting networking inside of the OpenStack cloud. Well, with that, we can deploy the NXOS operating system inside of the resulting OpenStack deployment redundantly um, through the use of uh, VMs that run NXOS. So it's a common look and feel for those network administrators that are familiar with that technology to be able to uh, automate and orchestrate the networking, and get a viewpoint into the networking in the cloud. From a Cinder's perspective, where we highlight our block storage service uh, there, our, specifically our storage service catalog. I'm going to get to that in a minute here. That's basically storage as a service. So I mentioned cooperative support. This is an overlooked uh, facet of, of owning a converged infrastructure platform that I wanted to stress. So for those customers that may have had a support experience with a vendor before, and it turns out to be a different issue from one that you originally called in about, you get the phone tag situation where you said, oh, that's not our problem. Call, other, call the other vendor there. Well, that's not so with FlexPod. We have cooperative support built into the offering to where if you're most comfortable with calling NetApp about any problem that you may have, and it turns out to be a problem with the OpenStack services or a problem with you know, the networking, some setup detail implementation that you may have, it's a seamless handoff. We have a team of experts internally between the three companies that we uh, coordinate our support of. So you can have that uh, seamless experience of support and not being bounced back and forth. And we have a lab, specifically a lab where we can recreate that problem that you may have collaboratively amongst the three companies and get to a solution to your problem faster. So integration matters. And so I've been talking a lot about FlexBot, OpenStack on FlexBot. I'm happy to announce we've just published a new NetApp Technical Report, Red Hat OpenStack 8 on FlexPod. Uh, for those that may not know Red Hat OpenStack 8 numbering, that's based on the Liberty release, and that actually GA'd two weeks ago. And so this is a comprehensive validated deployment guide that you can use to implement uh, RHEL OSP 8 on a FlexPod in your lab. And there's a link to it. So along with that paper that contains exactly what you need to set up all of the infrastructure bits and deploy Red Hat OpenStack platform through their director. Um, we also have contributed upstream code uh, to NetApp's GitHub site, which I'll put a link to that in a future slide here, where you can get Cinder, Swift, Manila completely automated and installed for you uh, automatically. So you can pull down these templates that we've put up on GitHub, specifically heat templates. So the director being triple O takes heat templates as an input, consumes those, feeds them to Puppet, 
and that's what does you know, all of the customization in the overcloud. More on that in a second. Um, but the point being, there's no manual configuration required to get NetApp E-Series you know, up, up and running after you get the initial infrastructure up to be taken advantage of by the OpenStack installer. Also, which I thought was, was worth mentioning here, I started playing around with OpenStack around the Icehouse release and doing some of the operations, the common operations that I thought were common through the Horizon dashboard was tricky. It's a little challenging. And in this technical report, we've actually been able to demonstrate common operations all through the Horizon dashboard. So definitely, you know, normally if you, if you have a, a large cloud environment, you're gonna be doing anything with the RESTful API anyway, or automating it, less so the Horizon dashboard. But if you're new to OpenStack, or uh, if, if you're just not sure how to write those commands or do some of those you know, atomic actions, everything is demonstrated via Horizon. So definitely a kudos to the Horizon developers um, in Liberty. I could do everything. I could spin up a project, spin up a user, uh, create a volume, create a share, even all through the, you know, upload objects to the object store, create networks, routers, all that stuff. And all of that's been demonstrated in, in the deployment guide there. And afterwards, we had a resulting cloud there, um, you know, fully HA capable deployment. We decided, well, let's test it a little bit. So we utilized the OpenStack Rally, which is a benchmark as a service project um, written for OpenStack. Uh, and did some comparisons um, there, which I'll share with you in a few minutes. So specifically from a deployment perspective, I'm just gonna take you through really quickly what, what that paper shows. Um, it shows you exactly how to configure all of the physical infrastructure bits, the Cisco UCS uh, servers, the Cisco Nexus networking switches, the NetApp FAS storage, the NetApp E-Series storage, all ready to go. Now, you, it, it takes you through how to deploy Red Hat's OpenStack platform director. So that's based on the upstream triple O community project. Um, they used to use Foreman and OSP6 and switched to director in seven and eight. Um, but really to take from that, the director could be also be called the undercloud node. Um, so what that means is, if you, it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, synonym here, triple O, it's, it's spelled like that, T-R-I-P-L-O. It's actually OpenStack on OpenStack. That's what that project means. So it's using OpenStack to actually deploy OpenStack. I mean, we have such a great ecosystem, why not use it to deploy a, an environment? And so what it does, it's a DHCP server, a TFTP server, it's a lifecycle management project. It runs you know, heat specifically to build out the overcloud through Puppet. And the overcloud is, for all lack of a better term, the resulting OpenStack deployment. So that contains uh, in our design, a controller node, which runs all of the inherent OpenStack services, like uh, the, the Cinder Scheduler API, the Manila Share service, basically everything except running the VMs. That's, our, that's the compute node uh, host profile. And so the platform director takes care of uh, everything involved in configuring um, those systems uh, representing the OpenStack deployment, automated all in a highly available manner. So after you deploy the director, you download those heat templates that I mentioned there. Um, download them to a local directory. Again, all of it's demonstrated in the technical report. But you can customize those heat templates based on your own reflective network infrastructure, whatever subnets you use or anything else. Um, very little customization done there, you know, hope, hopefully to help accelerate uh, your journey in, in deploying OpenStack on a FlexPod. We've tried to you know, limit the amount of uh, manual configuration entries there, so that automation is there to help you. And then you deploy the overcloud. So you take that automation, you feed it into the director, and it will boot up all of the servers. They boot uh, from network specifically, storing all of their uh, operating system and configuration information on the SAN, uh, being boot from SAN, so stateless computing. It's a tenant of FlexPod. And happy to report that in our lab, a four controller, three compute host deployment took us 35 minutes with this tool. So extremely fast, ready to go, uh, ready for work. So after that, launch the post-deployment scripts uh, for the Manila project. So you can get Manila in the resulting cloud deployment. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't take advantage of the upstream triple O heat template community uh, integration for Manila. So uh, NetApp, we were really very passionate about the Manila project and we want customers to have the file share as a service project inside of OpenStack. Um, so we've contributed uh, shell scripts in that same GitHub repository that help you deploy Manila in an automated fashion, you know, non-disruptively integrated into the pacemaker cluster, which is the software HA bits that comprise the OpenStack deployment automatically for you. 
and I just mentioned that. So Cinder using NFS as a backend by our NetApp FAS platform, Swift using iSCSI backed by NetApp E-Series, and Manila are all configured automatically for you. So you don't have to do anything in the resulting deployment. Now, along with uh, the paper, I just want to bring up a couple things. I mentioned these at one of my last sessions. Um, one of the things that's, that's differentiating with utilizing NetApp storage um, in a resulting OpenStack deployment is something that we call our storage service catalog. And what that really means is you can define volume types or share types. So go back to Cinder, it has the volume type capability. Or with Manila, it has the share type capability. You can define you know, classes of service based on those underlying storage features that you want to surface up to the tenants that utilize services in OpenStack. Uh, so really, that's storage as a service. So by default, Cinder, the scheduler, will round robin through uh, a selection algorithm, basically, which backend has the most space. Well, that's not really helpful if you want to surface enterprise class features to the tenants to make sure that their Cinder volumes or their Manila share types land on specific volumes that have uh, like solid state disks or have space efficiency features enabled on it. Um, so what does that look like? So what we can do with that capability is actually uh, define where those volumes will end up. So take, take it from a you know, perspective, of instead of the silver, gold, bronze moniker that we, that we refer to in classes of service, maybe think of it more as aligning your uh, workloads, or aligning your volumes to actual workloads. Like say you have a dev test use case where you want to make sure that thin provisioning, compression, you know, encryption are enabled on the underlying storage volume that encompasses those Cinder volumes. Well, you can do that through the Cinder uh, volume types, and you associate extra specs with it. So our unified Cinder driver, as it runs, the Cinder scheduler will pull through the available backends and actually pick up statistics, these extra specs, like this volume that's exposed to OpenStack services. It's got thin provisioning enabled or it's backed by SATA disks or SATA or, you know, or solid state disks. That's reported up through the scheduler. And now uh, when you define those storage types and you align those extra specs to them, your volumes will pick and, sh and successfully through the scheduler go on the right storage back end based on what you desire there. So if you're a service provider or an enterprise customer where you uh, provide you know, chargeback services to your respective organizations, you can effectively bill based on intent. So chargeback meets intent. So you can align those workloads, whatever they may be, with those underlying uh, enterprise class feature sets that our customers uh, know and expect out of having you know, enterprise class storage in an OpenStack environment. So specifically, if there's another use case here, VDI, you can have we have data protection enabled on that, deduplication. So you just you set those extra specs uh, on the volume type, and the scheduler will pick out intelligent placement to ensure that those volumes or those shares uh, land on the right place for that storage. So just a couple more examples here. So another thing that's differentiating uh, with, with having NetApp as the back end for your storage is rapidly provisioning uh, and instances that are both provision quickly and efficient on the amount of space utilization that they consume. So, you know, from a glance image store back to a cinder volume perspective, um, we at NetApp have, have had many years and great technology with our snapshotting technology. So pairing our storage platform and our unified cinder driver together enables uh, a feature called enhanced instance creation. So really what does that mean? That means in your resulting OpenStack deployment with the NetApp Unified Cinder Driver automatically employed in tandem with our storage platform, uh, you can get rapid in-time copies of instances that utilize our FlexClone technology. So in the lab, uh, so what FlexClone, what FlexClone really means is employing snapshots to really clone those images out based on like a dev test user case, use case that we mentioned earlier. So if you need to spin up 100 instances rapidly from it, the same glance image, we can do that automatically or quickly with our flex clone technology. So rapid persistent instance creation through those cinder volumes that uh, underlie those, uh, those instances. Also, as I mentioned, the space efficiency associated with having our, the glance image store have uh, deduplication technology enabled on it. Um, certainly we've seen 
up to a 90% <laughs> uh, reduction in the amount of physical space that's used uh, for those resulting deployments. And as I mentioned earlier about our own internal deployment, we see about a 92% savings. And that's not just OpenStack. That's other platforms like VMware, Hyper-V, and that's not just a best case lab thing. That's what we see in the field too. Okay, enough talk. Enough talk. Uh, you know, talk is great, but doing is better. That's one of my colleagues used to tell me that all the time. So as I said, uh, after the resulting deployment was done, we decided to employ the OpenStack Rally Benchmark as a Service project uh, to see just exactly how our cloud performs. And so we took Rally, and we configured it to have a 35 concurrency. So for those that are not familiar with Rally, what that means is. At any one point in time, there's 35 concurrent requests happening on the OpenStack control plane. So we're, we are effectively stressing the control plane in OpenStack because if there's no control plane, there's no users that can be able to do anything with any of the services in OpenStack. So why not build that into the pipeline there and do that as a portion of this test? So we started off by saying, why don't we create 2,000 instances? And again, in our deployment, it was four compute nodes and three controllers. So we spun up. Uh, we put a flavor, um, the flavor itself, one vCPU, 256 megs of RAM, and 60 gigs of physical disk space. Uh, we uploaded to Glance the uh, Fedora Core 23 image, you know, versus a standard CROS, which may not be able to do very much. So this is a real live image. And we launched uh, a rally job right there. And part of, the, part of the thing that we wanted to do here was compare and contrast utilizing maybe the generic NFS Cinder driver versus the NetApp NFS Cinder driver in the resulting deployment. Um, this will tell us just all the integrations that I mentioned earlier about the enhanced instance creation, the space efficiency. Let's see if that's really true. So with the generic NFS Cinder driver to create those 2,000 persistent instances, so that's creating 2,000 persistent volumes, booting them, and then deleting them afterwards. So how much time did that take? Well, in our lab it took us about 68 minutes. So we flipped the switch, we turned on the NetApp NFS Cinder driver, and it took us 20 minutes. So that's a reduction in time of almost 70%. Um, what about how much space those images took up? So again, let's talk about the generic Cinder driver first. You know, Fedora Core 23, I believe, is 200, 200 gig, some, something like that. Um, we looked at the amount of space that uh, utilizing the generic NFS Cinder driver. So again, the rally, atomic task, creating those volumes, how much space did that take up? Well, it took us you know, almost 1.2 terabytes. What about the NetApp Unified Cinder driver? 42.9. It was amazing. It was a 99% less physical space allocation for those 2,000 instances with the difference of using the NetApp Unified Cinder driver versus the generic one. And I think that goes back to what I was saying earlier about the snapshotting capabilities and the flex cloning. If we flex clone 2,000 instances from an image in Glance, there's really not that much difference in data from that original image. So we don't have to store that information on disk. So we don't have to. And so that's, that's, that's a testament to that technology being employed in an OpenStack environment. OK, that was interesting. Well, what about a bigger image? What about something that has a lot more data associated with it that's a lot bigger. You know, it's, it's, you know, instead of choosing just a generic image out, what difference does it make if the image itself is a lot larger? So we took the Fedora 23 core image, downloaded it, and we filled it with, I believe, 35 gigs of randomized data. So we did a dev u random cat into a file there. So this would simulate something along the lines of like a large database or something of the like. So just the, the exercise here was get a larger image, more so than just a small image, to, to demonstrate what, what difference it makes on the flex cloning technology or how long it takes to spin up an instance. So we still use the same flavor size and still the same uh, 60 gig flavor. But this time we only did a one concurrency with Rally. We weren't as interested in stressing the control plane at that point because we had done that earlier. And there was a 100% success rate no matter which, which of the drivers we used. So just to not have too many different proof points there, we decided to lower the concurrency to one to really just accurately uh, estimate how much time it takes given the comparison of the drivers. So with the generic NFS driver for, that, for one image, so that 35 gig, about 35 gigs on disk cloned from our copy from uh, glance to cinder took us 12 minutes. It took 12 whole minutes to, to make that one initial image. With NetApp, it took us 32 seconds. 
So that's, that's, that's another testament to the cloning capabilities that we have uh, inside of OpenStack to be able to uh, utilize the NetApp NFS Cinder driver to make that instance creation that much faster. So that's less time that your, your customers are waiting uh, to get instances booted up. Now, what about space, space utilization in that case? So this time we did, I know we did 2,000 instances before, but this time, unfortunately, I know it sounds funny and corny, but we're a storage company, we ran out of space, so we had to reduce the amount of uh, instances that we, we are creating at this point to 100. With the generic NFS Cinder driver, with those 60 gig size images that are being copied from glance to Cinder volumes, it took a full 6,000 gigs, six terabytes. So 60 gigs times 100, simple math, six terabytes even with thin provisioning enabled on the generic NFS driver. Well, what about with the NetApp generic driver? 87 gig. So even with this huge image that we have that has 35 gigs of randomized data, it's still, it still takes up very little space, similar to the exercise that we showed earlier with the 2,000 instances. And again, that's, that's a, a direct result of the efficiency of our cloning technology by only storing the deltas of those images in disk. Because that 35 gig randomized data, it's still the same data on disk. We can deduplicate those blocks and only store the resulting deltas on disk for those 100 images. So you might be asking, what, what was the point of this exercise? Um, well, we would have liked to have benchmarked this against maybe different storage providers, but we, our lawyers would come after us if we did that. So, uh, you know, the, the point was not to tarnish or, or rip into the generic NFS Cinder driver. It's still a perfectly valid option for deployments, but we're just trying to stress that infrastructure and integration really does matter. Not only the physical infrastructure bits, but also the software integration um, into the NetApp NFS Cinder driver. It really makes a lot of sense and it really saves a lot of time and space for resulting OpenStack clouds. So a couple key, key takeaways that I want to leave you with today. Um, of course, I'm going to say FlexBot is the ideal converged infrastructure platforms, our platform for deploying Red Hat OpenStack platform in production environments. This, this is not, uh, you know, trial by fire. The, these are, these are, uh, this is a proven, verified architecture that you can use to get going and, and uh, speed up your OpenStack deployment for true production workloads. So you can concentrate on getting those workloads in the environment and less, less on the infrastructure bits. Let us take care of that uh, for you. Um, you can spend more time, like I said, developing those applications um, and less time designing and deploying the infrastructure bits that comprise an OpenStack deployment with FlexPod. And our cooperative support program, um, it provides peace of mind with an infrastructure you, re you really can count on. So if you run into a problem or you run into an issue, because not everybody has you know, rocket scientists inside of engineering that know OpenStack in and out, um, you can use FlexPod cooperative support to help you should the needs arise. So a couple of resources that I want to leave you with too. Um, that TR, that's the same link that I published to earlier. That was, uh, that, that's a 150 page document that ho hopefully is, is useful for your respective deployments. But we also released a solution with uh, Red Hat OpenStack Platform 6 back in the October timeframe. That's a Cisco validated design. Um, both the design and the deployment guide are there also as referenceable sources. Uh, but also if you just want something that's maybe a little bit more introductory uh, rather than, I know the deployment guide is, is quite lengthy and long, uh, you can download this solution brief here. So that's just, just a four page quick introduction that hopefully uh, summarizes a lot of the uh, integration and pieces that I mentioned here today of, as to why FlexPod is, is an ideal uh, converged infrastructure platform for OpenStack. Uh, you can definitely follow us uh, at, for all things OpenStack at NetApp at the Twitter handle OpenStack NetApp. I also want to highlight a couple other sessions that are uh, occurring here while we're at the summit. And this is Wednesday. Um, these, these are still sessions that are coming on. Uh, specifically shared file systems management, SUSE and NetApp are both presenting uh, about that Wednesday. Uh, the same level in meeting room 12. Um, the Open Container Initiative and the Courier Projects and the, the CNCF, IBM and NetApp are co-presenting on that integration Thursday, 9.50 to 10.30. And we have another session uh, with, specifically led by NetApp where 
uh, we can use uh, mang the Magnum project, which is the container project in OpenStack, to do big data rapid prototyping. Um, that's Thursday at 11 o'clock. And you can always see us or me or any of my colleagues down at the NetApp booth, A38. We'd love to talk to you as to uh, all things OpenStack at both NetApp and SolidFire. And you can, as I said, you can always visit us at netapp.github.io. There's all kinds of great uh, distribution agnostic information as to enabling, you know, NetApp storage uh, with OpenStack that you can use. It has, you know, very good documentation. That's that's a one-stop shop for that stuff. Um, no, we've got a couple minutes left. If there's any questions. All right, I'll be available here afterwards. I did bring some printouts from our booth that list all of the sessions that NetApp and SolidFire have done or will do at the summit. Encourage you to take one, be happy to give you one. Even if you wanted to watch some of the videos that may have already occurred, they're all up on YouTube and freely available. All right, thanks everyone.